Hi, my name is Jessica and I wanted to explain to you the differing opinions between the US's approach and the UK's approach to bunny bonding. The US has most of its cues, if you will, toward rabbit care and rabbit psyche from the House Rabbit Society. In the UK, the equivalent to the House Rabbit Society is the RWAF, which stands for the Rabbit Welfare Association and Fund. I've kind of come up with a hybrid approach that I think gets the best from both worlds, and I'm going to share that with you because the internet is a great place, but it's overwhelming for figuring out what the best course of action is if you want to bond your rabbits. There's a lot of warring opinions, there's a lot of anecdotal evidences. These two groups are responsible for most of the bonding information that is out there, and some of it just doesn't agree. They don't line up. Where do you even start? The number one thing, though, that both the U and the UK will agree on is that you must bond in a neutral space. This is not negotiable. A neutral space is either a space that neither rabbit has ever been before or a space that has been washed, sprayed down, wiped down with a white vinegar and water solution and let sit for two weeks. I am currently bonding my rabbits in a previously not neutral area and so it does work. I can also tell you that previously I tried to neutralize a space, not this room, but neutralize the space with pine saw for four days, and that didn't work. White vinegar helps break down any urine stains because it helps break down the calcium in the urine that is particular to rabbits. A couple of people here and there might say, well, I bonded in, an, in a non-neutral space and everything's fine. I'm willing to bet that it's a baby bond. If you're not familiar with what a baby bond is, it's a bond where mother and offspring are bonded because they have not yet been weaned or they have been weaned and they've been reintroduced and the baby has not yet hit puberty. Or it's two siblings that have grown up together, both of which have not hit puberty yet, and so they're just still in the familiar throes of the relationship. And that leads to the second non-negotiable the US and the UK both agree on. You have to have your rabbits fixed to have a successful bond in most cases. And I say that with such unbelievable hesitation because I have to admit that there are rare cases where you can bond at least one fixed and one non-fixed rabbit, even rarer still, two unfixed rabbits of the same sex. But now you're playing with a very, very dangerous variable. People who bond unfixed rabbits are going off of the idea that in the wild, rabbits are not fixed and they're all together and living happily ever after. That's true, but they have different motivations for doing that. They're out in the wild trying to just breed. So they're together in these groups for reproductive purposes, not necessarily for relationship in the sense that a house rabbit would be looking for a company. So they have the hormones to back up their need for rabbit company because they're looking for mates. Once the rabbits hit puberty, they start to separate. They start to go on doing their own thing or they just rebreed and, and, and things are in a very heightened state of aggression, to be honest, but it works because they're just breeding. If you have an unfixed rabbit that you're trying to bond, you are at risk now of experiencing a surge of hormones in that rabbit when you least expect it. There's really no way to tell when or how that could happen because rabbits are never in heat. There's no cycle. They're always ready to breed. We humans have had a hard time tracking why hormones surge, what environmental factors might contribute to that. It's really just a coin toss. And those hormones can still be lingering in the body up to six to 12 weeks post fixing them. The US and the UK have differing timelines, but the least I've seen is six and the most I've seen is 12. But I guess a happy medium is about eight I've seen. Uh, the UK is cool with waiting eight weeks. And if it's still a problem to bond, maybe wait a couple more weeks because the hormones are still there. Now, listen to me talking. I actually did bond a fixed and non-fixed rabbit. I knew it was a risky thing. The male was fixed. The female was getting fixed in... I wanted to say a month and a half from then. Not the best idea, but there was no way I was planning to keep them together long term with her intact. I was still kind of playing with the baby bond idea because they were siblings. But I would never just like randomly get an unfixed rabbit and bond them with a stranger fixed rabbit and think that it's the best. I just happen to have two siblings and it just how the chips fell. So you're playing with fire. I was playing with fire. That is a non-negotiable. 
in 99.9% .9 of the situations, but I'm going to say a neutral space in 100% of the situations is a non-negotiable. So that's the hierarchy for you. The U.S. is really big on making sure that you pre-bond, or at least you have the option to pre-bond. What is that? Well, before you decide to put your bunnies into that neutral space, you can kind of get them used to each other's scents for the first couple weeks or months, however long you choose, by swapping toys that the other one has used, putting the toys into each other's enclosure, putting the litter boxes into each other's enclosure, or even switching the rabbits themselves from each enclosure so that they can get all the scents recognized and hopefully lead to a smoother bond when they finally see the rabbit that they've been smelling for the last couple of weeks. The UK says at best that does nothing and at worst it can actually cause more animosity. How so? Well, the UK's philosophy on bunny psyche is that well, whenever you swap toys, you are essentially causing an invasion. So you have the toy coming into the bunny's territory. It smells foreign. It smells like someone that doesn't belong. And now you've put the rabbit on guard. Who's coming into my territory? Why is this here? I have to protect my area. And that's why you might see a lot more poops, more peeing, because they're trying to remark their territory in case some rabbit missed the memo. Additionally, switching the rabbits themselves the UK is actually even more categorically against it. They're a kind of tolerate the swapping of toys, but they're not going for the swapping of the rabbits themselves because what you're actually doing, in their opinion, is putting the rabbit into enemy territory. And you're expecting them to be like, oh yeah, I smell another rabbit and this is cool. Like, I'm kind of on the UK side for that. The RWAF is onto something there. The UK, the RWAF anyway, is categorically against stress bonding. What is stress bonding? Well, in your research, you might've seen it before putting your rabbits in their neutral space for the actual bonding process. You will kind of set the stage of their brains by popping them into a carrier, driving around for a bit, kind of making them cuddle with each other so that they can realize this bunny next to me is not a threat. And then they're kind of calmed or more or less stunned when you stick them in the neutral space. Another form of stress bonding is putting their carrier on top of a washing machine or a dryer while it's running, or even sticking them in the bathtub, which forces them to try harder to keep their footing. The UK is gonna say, uh -uh, absolutely not. Relationships need to be wrought on love, not fear. You're forcing them to be scared and making that the basis of your relationship between your bunnies, it just doesn't make any sense. How would you like it as a human if all your relationships were based on being scared of them? I bought into that. I mean, it's a fine theory on paper. My quad still tried to kill each other. So what's the deal? Well, upon more research, I kind of realized that it's unhealthy for humans to have relationships based on love and not uh, based on fear and not love. But A, they're not humans. We're trying to overcome or outsmart their instincts and their behavioral impulses. There's a difference in psyche altogether. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think the example of stress bonding is more akin to the idea that if the zombie apocalypse happens and I'm alone with one other person that happens to be, on any other day of the week, an enemy of mine, I'm still probably going to team up with them against the zombies because everything that we've been quarreling about is probably insignificant now. That's kind of how the bunnies react. They're like, well, we've been squabbling about toys. We've been squabbling about this is my room. This is your room. And now we might die because we might be going to the vet. I think I'm going to be friends with you for two seconds because you're all I got. And then when they're in the neutral space, they're still in the even keel of that kind of rigmarole in their brain. And there you go. So while the UK is against stress bonding, it's interesting to note that it's really just the RWAF because I've spoken to bonders in the UK and rescue workers, and they all use stress bonding. I talked to somebody who had worked alongside someone who was 15 plus years in the bonding rescue industry and had a 100% success rate in bonding the rabbits that came her way. Hundreds and hundreds of pairs and quads and all of it. That's pretty impressive to not have one that failed. What was her method? Well, stress bonding was essential. You bring them into the car, 
you ride them around and then you put them in the neutral space. But here's the other thing that she also did, which um, the, the U.S. doesn't really talk about at all. Instead of the pre-bonding where you're swapping toys and whatnot, she actually went the do opposite. House the rabbits in areas where they can't see, hear, or smell each other for at least three weeks and then reintroduce them cold turkey in that car. That's also interesting because the U.S. Ten, I've seen this a lot in my research where they say that it's probably time to give up on bonding the particular rabbits you have if at any point one of them draws blood because they fought. But all rabbits can be bonded. It doesn't matter what they've gone through before. So the UK actually has something you can do in lieu of stress bonding called forced cuddling. And what that is, is you take your rabbits, you put them on a chair, you put them on a couch next to you, on a table, and you force their heads to touch and snuggle while you're petting them and massaging them and making them feel good so that they associate the other rabbit with good, safe feelings. But I think that's so funny because if they're comparing the bunny psyche to a human psyche, that would be just as toxic as basing a relationship on fear and not love, in my opinion, because what human would want to be hugging and kissing somebody that they can't stand? You're just like forcing this false attraction to try to grow? I think that would really make the bunnies annoyed. I tried doing that a couple times. My bunnies were not having any of it. It's not bonding, like the UK is not going to say that forced cuddling is bonding. It's just one of those preparatory things you can do if you choose, if they are just lunging at each other in the neutral area and you need to calm them down and do a reset. I don't think it holds a candle to taking them in the car. So now we're going to go into there's three different approaches and you might have seen this in your research as well. There's 24-7 bonding, there's daytime bonding, and there's date bonding. 24-7 bonding is the better alternative of the three if you have the time and the energy and the inclination because it's not actually often feasible for everyone. 24-7 bonding is when you stick the bunnies that you want to bond in their neutral space and you keep them there. You sleep there, you eat there, and it's around the clock. And that's certainly going to get them bonded in a shorter amount of time consecutive calendar day wise. That's not feasible for everybody. So people have come up with other options. There's daytime bonding, which is you stick with them for the whole day and then you put them back in their previous spaces at night. Or there's date bonding. And this is the one where the UK and the US have different opinions on that I want to go over. In the UK, if you're going to do date bonding, which means that you just do a little bit of time each day until you're able to get them together for good, you have to at least do four hours in the neutral space. They'll say, okay, if you absolutely can't do more than two hours, it's better than skipping a day, but it's really not optimum at all. Whereas the US will actually advocate for don't do any more the first couple times than 15 to 30 minutes tops, and then gradually get more and more and more. The UK's idea is that if you have it less than four hours, you've not really given the rabbits enough time to adjust to being put in that new space. If you stick them in the neutral space, at least for the first 10, 20, 30 minutes, at least, maybe even an hour, they're just checking out their new surroundings. They don't even have time to check, okay, who this other rabbit is, unless they're just, you know, really psycho and just beelining for each other to kill them. But for most, you know, all things being equal, most rabbits are going to be too curious about their enclosure or their surroundings that are brand new, wondering if there's danger. They are prey animals, so they're checking to make sure that everything's safe. If you've got them in for 10, 15, 20 minutes, they've basically just figured out, oh, this is a good space, and then you're bringing them back home. I mean, what was the bonding with that? In my opinion, I think the UK has got something there. The US is really big on encouraging the bathroom as being a really good neutral space to start bonding your rabbits. I bonded in the bathroom for my first pair and it worked fine. I did date bonding, in fact. With the bathroom situation, it's a fine alternative and the UK will say that. However, something the UK will say that the US will not say at all is that it's optimum if you have the ability to bond in the space that you plan to have them living in permanently. 
I'm doing that right now. I've neutralized this room. This is where they plan to live. And the reason is because at some point in the process, you are going to have to transition between the bathroom and where they plan to live. Just, you know, whenever that is. And the fact that they're already going upstairs to the bathroom or going down the hall to the bathroom and coming back to their enclosure and then going back and whatever, like you're just adding another layer of them having to get used to something. And the transition from bathroom where they're starting to associate, oh, here's where I meet the other bunny. And then you have to bring them into a new place together. It's just too much. This is also one of the reasons why sometimes, unfortunately, when families move to a new house with their bunnies that are already bonded and we're doing great, the bond will actually weaken if not break and they might have to do some bonding, rebonding in the new space because they're overwhelmed and it's just the way the psyche works. So if you're able to keep them in the space that they're planning to live in permanently, all you have to do is just expand from there, especially with 24 seven bonding, certainly. I, I honestly, it's very discouraged in the UK to 24 seven bond in the bathroom because you know, you got so much time consecutively spent there and then you have to transition very harshly after so much even keeledness. So if you are going to go the route of even daytime bonding, to be honest, or at least dating bonding. Try to have it so that you can neutralize their permanent living space. Make sure that you also neutralize any adjacent rooms, which means that you cannot house the rabbits while they're not being bonded in a session next to the bonding room. Take into consideration the whole point of neutralizing a room is to dissipate the scent. So if they can still smell the scent a doorway away, you're not doing anything. So for example, this room, I've it's in the foyer and it's next to the living room. I've neutralized the living room and I've neutralized this room. Uh, the dining room is still not neutralized, but that's two rooms away. And that's where I had housed one of the pairs um, before starting the 24 hour session. A very common first bonding area for the US is a box or a bin that's large enough to have your rabbits in so that you can pick them up if they start fighting immediately and kind of jostle it around and keep that stress bonding from the car ride kind of continuing as long as you need to in the first couple hours, couple days. It's also convenient because you can pick up the box and bring it with you anywhere you need to be in the house so you don't have to sit there in the same spot, at least for the early stages. The UK is not cool with that. They say a box especially is blocking the vision of these prey animals that really need to see their surroundings in order to feel safe. Plus, of course, the added component of the stress bonding aspect. They're not going for that. They'd rather the rabbits be on the floor. I don't personally care for it, not really because of the whole line of vision thing, but just because of what I said about expanding the space that they're going to live in permanently. And you still have to have a transition from the box to another space. And there's a variable there that some bunnies might get flipped out of that. But it certainly doesn't hurt the rabbits. Totally fine if that's what you choose. Better yet, a bin because it's a little bit see-through. They can see outside of it. And some people will put the lid on with some holes so they can breathe, which is kind of weird. But the idea is they won't jump out so you don't have to be watching it every five seconds. But I think it's important to watch it at least for the first 48 hours just so they're not getting into fights. But again, that's something I don't have too high of an opinion on. It's kind of a continuation of the car ride without the car ride. So I'm cool with it, but I'd rather get the car ride done and then put them in their space. But I don't see anything problematic with that, despite them not being able to see. And I think that in some cases it might actually help them not to be able to see because now they have to concentrate on the bunny with them instead of thinking about everything else that they're around. After that, it's kind of gonna be trial and error as to how quickly you can expand. But here's the interesting part. I asked my UK group and my US group on Facebook for bonding the same question. I asked, can you bond using 24 hour, seven day a week bonding? Can you have it done in three weeks? Is that a reasonable aspiration or is that ambitious? 90% of my answers in the UK group said no. 90% of the people in my US group said, oh yeah, and time to spare most likely. That alone is telling to me. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the US will 
incorporate stress bonding. And then because the UK is not going to use stress bonding, or at least the RWAF doesn't want to advocate for it, the expansion rate is going to be slower. You can't just give them more and more space quickly because they're not going to be ready for it. They'll get territorial quickly. They haven't had that mental reset. So for the US, you might hear something in terms of, oh, if they're getting on well, there's no fighting, probably expand after 24 hours, a foot, two feet, whatever. They'll give you some pretty broad guidelines and suggestions. The UK is going to have you know, X amount of centimeters in X amount of hours or X amount of days, you're not going to lose anything by waiting longer. You're going to lose everything by trying to hurry the process. So do keep that in mind as well. I like the UK's approach on their particular formulas because it does more or less troubleshoot or safeguard against being too trigger happy on expansion. But at the same time, there are other personalities of your rabbits that might help the process along. You can see they're getting on well. So in another video, I plan to detail the method that I've used for these guys and I'm documenting my journey on bonding them. Right now, they're just on day number three. So far, it's working like a charm. I can't even tell you. I will give you the history of what I've had to deal with with these guys previously to let you know how unbelievably miraculous the getting on is with them right now. So I really do think this works. And um, yeah, so hopefully it helps you with your own research as you see all of these conflicting things about bonding, you'll understand where each piece of information is coming from.